Hello, welcome to a new session on this course on uh, introduction to embedded system design. In this lecture, we are going to consider the uh, ecosystem that a microcontroller requires for uh, its operation. And once we complete that, we would look at the power supply building block as part of the six block uh, representation. So let's start. What are the elements of a microcontroller ecosystem? Meaning, what does a microcontroller require to function independently? As, as you know now, that a microcontroller is a complete uh, computer on a single chip. It is able to perform uh, whatever it is programmed to do, just if few elements of uh, its required ecosystem are provided to it. What are these elements? So I title it as Roti, Kapda, Makan and Internet for a microcontroller. This is this uh, uh, you know crazy sounding title has been derived from a previous uh, a slogan uh, which said for human survival you need three things Roti that is food, uh, Kapda, clothing and uh, housing. In recent times uh, even the uh, lowest level of uh, society requires internet for survival and therefore a human being requires four things food, clothing, housing and internet. And we found a interesting parallel that even a microcontroller requires four such things and what are these four things for its survival and uh, uh, active working? It requires a clock, we will see why it requires a clock. It requires a reset circuitry, usually that reset circuitry is integrated in the microcontroller itself. It also requires a power supply different from perhaps different from the power supply requirement of the rest of the uh, embedded system uh, application and then it requires a mechanism to download code from the development platform which often is your uh, desktop or laptop computer into the memory of the microcontroller. So we have to uh, ensure that the microcontroller is uh, provided for, for with these uh, uh, elements, then only it can uh, function properly and if the microcontroller can function properly, then the rest of the uh, embedded system can function properly. So let us start with the first uh, element of this ecosystem, the clock subsystem. Why do we need a clock? Can, can we design microcontroller systems without a clock? Most of the time you would have seen that an an analog circuit does not require a clock. But, uh, Microcontroller is different because it is an example of a digital circuit. Now digital circuits are, can be designed in two ways, what is called as asynchronous sequential circuits and the other type is uh, sequential, uh, synchronous sequential circuits. So any digital circuit, digital circuit or system could be designed in two ways uh, synchronous sequential mode and asynchronous. Now asynchronous uh, sequential circuits are very efficient, they consume very little power but they are very difficult to design and even more difficult to debug and verify. And therefore, almost 99% of all uh, logic circuit implementations are of this variety, synchronous sequential. Now the term here synchronous means that it uses a, a clock circuit for its operation and therefore you need a clock. So this. Uh, uh, this defines or this justifies the need of a clock because a microcontroller is an example of a synchronous sequential circuit. Then the next question arises, so we have answered this. The next question arises as to what should be the clock frequency. Now there are two contrasting, two diverse, uh, diverging uh, arguments that the clock frequency should be as low as possible. Why? Because in a uh, CMOS uh, logic circuit, uh, 
the power dissipation consists of two parts the static power dissipation plus the dynamic power dissipation. The static power dissipation is a function of the technology the way the uh, system was uh, built, but the power the dynamic power dissipation in a uh, CMOS uh, circuit is equal to the capacitance that the circuit uh, sees at, at its load into the frequency of operation into the VCC squared which means the dynamic power dissipation is directly proportional to the frequency of operation. So, if you increase the clock frequency that would consume the battery faster. If you double the uh, clock frequency it will double the power dissipation which means it will empty the uh, storage that is your battery in half the time. Now, this is one argument why you should keep the clock frequency low. What is the argument towards keeping the clock frequency high? Well, if the clock frequency the performance performance of a computer is directly proportional to the frequency. For a given computer if you double the clock frequency then it will execute the same program in half the time. And so, these are two uh, arguments which are pulling in opposite direction and therefore, in a uh, as a efficient uh, embedded uh, system design you must strike a balance one which optimizes the power dissipation and the other side where the frequency is uh, high enough for the uh, system to work properly. So, we have seen uh, why we need a clock, we have seen what should be the clock frequency, we have also considered uh, the implications of this clock frequency that if we uh, keep the clock frequency very low it will certainly uh, provide a longer uh, operation on a given battery, but its implication could be that it may not be able to fulfill the uh, requirements the timeliness of a program and therefore, you may want to increase it and as a designer as a engineer you would have to strike the right balance trade off between low enough frequency to keep the power down and high enough for it to perform its uh, designated task. What are the various topologies for generating this uh, the clock for microcontrollers? Now, if we look at the uh, uh, pin out of typical uh, microcontrollers you will see that it offers you uh, a couple of pins on which you can connect an external component such as a quartz crystal and often times it also has an internal uh, RC oscillator. Let us see what these uh, circuits look like or in general uh, how do we uh, create a clock signal. So, one simple method we already discussed in a previous uh, lecture was to use a Schmidt trigger with a capacitor and a resistor to generate the frequency. This is this could be used. Another one you could use a very popular IC called the triple five timer IC. It has a it is a 8 pin IC you connect 4 and 8 pins to VCC. Then you have pin number 7 you connect a resistor R1 and then pin number 2 and 6 you short them and you have another resistor this is R2 and from here you put a capacitor to ground see you have pin number 5 which you decouple and put a capacitor and on pin number 3 you get the output voltage. The frequency of such a uh, topology is 1.44 divided by R1 plus 2 R2 into C and you can uh, tailor the uh, values of uh, the resistances and the capacitors to get your uh, required frequency. Now, what happens is uh, a typical triple 5 oscillator uh, timer will require a power supply in the range of 4.5 volts at least to 15 volts for operation. And if your microcontroller 
also operates in a similar power supply range. Uh, you do get microcontrollers which work at 5 volts, then you could use a triple five timer. In case you have a microcontroller which requires a lesser operating voltage, say 3 volts, then instead of a regular triple five timer, you can use a CMOS uh, variant of uh, this timer called 7 triple five with identical uh, pin configuration, but with a much uh, uh, diverse uh, power supply requirement, it can operate from 3 volts to 18 volts. So, you could perhaps use uh, such a external clock generator. The output of this or output of this would be connected to your microcontroller. Here is your microcontroller and you may have pins called X1 and X2 uh, on which if you do not want an external uh, crystal, uh, external uh, clock generator, then you connect an appropriate crystal, a quartz crystal between these two pins. It may also require you to use some small value capacitors. These will be mentioned in the data sheet of your uh, microcontroller and you must follow those specifications. In case you do not want to use this crystal, then instead of this crystal, the output of such a clock generator one or say triple uh, five or seven triple five, this output be, could be connected to X1 or X2 input as uh, mentioned in the data sheet. There is another uh, uh, interesting method of generating clock and that is by way of what is called as a ring oscillator. A ring oscillator as the name suggests is a ring of components. In fact, it uses a NOT gate, an inverter an odd number of inverters. So, if I take three inverters and I put them, connect them like this, power it with appropriate supply voltage, then at any point here, it will show oscillations and the frequency of those oscillations will be equal to 1 upon 2 times the delay period of this uh, device into n. In this case, n is the number of elements, in this case 3. Uh, from the data sheet of this inverter, you can find out what is the delay time. For typical TTL uh, uh, family components, TD is of the order of few nanoseconds. Therefore, you might get um, maybe 1 by 2 into 3 into say 5 nanosecond. So, this is about 1 by 30 nanoseconds and that will give you roughly 30 megahertz of operation if you want a high frequency. Uh, please note that uh, triple five or seven triple five timer cannot provide a very high frequency beyond a couple of megahertz and so it may not be suitable for some applications. Uh, anyway, these are the methods of creating uh, external clock signals we, with which you can feed your microcontroller. It turns out that such a need uh, is usually not required, such a uh, topology is not required. Why? Because uh, microcontrollers have built in oscillators, they have built in RC oscillators and you can choose do you want to use a regular oscillator or do you want to use an internal RC oscillator. The internal RC oscillator you can imagine would be of this type and therefore since it uses these R and C to provide the clock frequency. the uh, variation in the resistor and capacitor values will change the frequency and therefore, it may not be used uh, for very accurate measurement of time. Uh, but if your application is okay with the, a little degraded uh, performance of the clock generator as in it is not as accurate as you would want, then this could be a good uh, low cost solution. In case you want a higher precision in time measurement, then you would use this option where on the designated pins of the microcontroller X1 and X2, you would connect a crystal of appropriate frequency uh, together with some capacitors if the data sheet says so. And uh, typically uh, the values of these are of the order of 10 to 20 picofarads here as well as here. And the crystals are could be in the range of the uh, lowest cr uh, crystal that you may get. The lowest crystal incidentally happens to be 32768 hertz and I will come to this 
I have also mentioned it in the past, but we will go through this again and going up to uh, 1 megahertz, uh, 2 megahertz and so on going up to few tens of megahertz, 20, 30 megahertz crystals may be available and you could use them for uh, determining the clock frequency. The oscillator part, the active part of the oscillator is inside the microcontroller. Therefore, all you need is external couple of components and this provides the source of clock. As I mentioned in the previous, uh, uh, in the previous uh, lecture, if the uh, microcontroller offers clock scalability, then you should start with the lowest clock frequency uh, crystal because internally you could use a multiplier to increase the clock frequency to a high value that you would want at given point of time. And if you so desire that uh, you do not require a high enough uh, clock frequency, then you can scale it down to the lowest value, which would be the crystal value in this case 32768 hertz. So that would be a good choice for a crystal to be used in such microcontrollers, which have this option of runtime clock scalability. So now we have seen uh, what topologies for clock generators and also what are the desirable features of the clock generator we have seen that we would like to have a clock generator which we can the frequency of which we can change at runtime. But this is usually uh, inherent and built in feature of a microcontroller and you must evaluate whether your application requires such a function then you must choose a microcontroller which offers that functionality. Apart from the clock frequency that is required by the microcontroller, you require an additional clock, a complete clock system and that clock system is called a real time clock. A real time clock is a dedicated uh, function, dedicated circuit which provides a certain functionality which is to maintain real time. So, uh, RTC maintains real time that is it, it can be used to know what is the current time of the day at where, whichever location you may be. Of course, for this it requires a source of frequency and usually the source of frequency is a crystal and that crystal is usually 3276. 8 hertz and this frequency uh, this seemingly odd number is not that odd for uh, computer and electronics engineers because this number is exactly equal to 2 raised to the power 15 is equal to 3 2 7 6 8. Historically these crystals were used uh, in uh, digital watches when they started appearing in late 60s and early 70s and this low enough frequency was chosen because uh, again these clock uh, circuits were CMOS based and the power dissipation had to be kept low uh, because they were battery operated and therefore uh, 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 balance was uh, uh, achieved that uh, the frequency should be low enough and the crystal should not be large enough therefore they found that 32768 is a good uh, trade off, it is uh, small in uh, small enough in size and uh, it uh, would lead to uh, relatively less uh, power dissipation. Although for record I may mention here that the very first uh, uh, digital uh, quartz crystal based clock that uh, came on the market was a Seco clock and it actually used uh, 8192 hertz uh, crystal. But subsequently the common uh, uh, frequency of use was uh, this and this frequency has since been adop adapted and adopted for use with RTC chips. Usually this is a 8 or 16 pin IC, it has a power supply uh, pin, it also has a battery backup. So you would have additional pin called VBAT and it would have a mechanism to communicate with the microcontroller. Usually this would be the I square C or SPI interface. You, we have discussed that communication protocols are inherently, some of the communication protocols are inherently available on certain microcontrollers. So these microcontrollers could talk to this real time clock chip 
through these communication protocols. It may also have a uh, alarm out, alarm pin, so that when you program this uh, real time clock to uh, wake you up on certain alarm, when that time uh, is reached, this signal, the alarm uh, pin would go from 0 to 1 and this could be used to interrupt the microcontroller to do whatever was uh, expected to be done. Uh, the frequency as I mentioned again is 32768 hertz. The uh, accuracy of the crystal here would de determine how good the real time is being maintained and typically these crystals have a temperature coefficient which is of the order of few parts per million per degree centigrade and therefore uh, traditional uh, real time uh, quartz crystal based real time clocks offer roughly a drift of a uh, few seconds per month kind of uh, numbers. If you want even more accurate uh, maintenance of time then there are two options. One is to regularly uh, correct the frequency or the time that this clock is maintaining and one way to do that is to get the actual time from the internet. There are, uh, there are services which offer that time and uh, in fact your PC and laptop often uh, fetch the time from the internet sources and uh, correct the uh, clock in case it has drifted. The other is to use a more accurate uh, source of clock and one way to do that would be to maintain this crystal and this circuit at a constant temperature. Let us go back to the uh, presentation to see what we are talking of. Uh, you can stabilize the uh, clock using a technique called TCXO meaning temperature compensated crystal oscillator. This is basically a small uh, enclosure where the temperature of that enclosure is maintained to a fixed value irrespective of the outside ambient temperature and this ensures that the crystal does not drift. Uh, another method uses a, uh, unfortunately this method consumes a lot of power to uh, maintain that temperature. Another method uses a temperature sensor and a varactor diode and the way uh, these uh, crystals work is the uh, circuit diagram of a crystal oscillator is like this that you would have an inverter and you would have a big large value of resistor, another resistor here and you would have a crystal between these pins and you would have couple of capacitors as I mentioned uh, low value capacitors. Now this is typically say 10 picofarad, this is also 10 picofarad and say this could be this could be say uh, 1 megahertz. Now if I change this uh, crystal, uh, if I change this capacitor I can load the uh, frequency operation and I can change it a little bit. Uh, similar way, way I can add uh, uh, therefore instead of changing it manually I could add a, a varactor diode say a varactor diode is nothing but a, a diode which is operated in reverse bias. Uh, I need to decouple the varactor diode here by using a large capacitor and I apply a bias voltage here say some V bias. By changing the bias voltage the capacitance between these two points can be changed and therefore the effective capacitance as seen at this point a would change which would uh, which would tweak the frequency operation. And so in many uh, uh, circuits where they want to offer a better uh, temperature stabilization they use a temperature sensor to monitor the temperature and to compensate for any variation in temperature they change the, uh, the bias voltage on this varactor diode which has been placed in parallel to one of the capacitors of the crystal so as to maintain uh, a fixed clock frequency. So these are various methods of having uh, higher accuracy uh, clock frequency signals in applications where you require 
uh, more precise uh, measurement than what would be available with just the quartz crystal or with a RC oscillator. 